Good morning, my preschool friends. Hello, happy Wednesday morning. <clears throat> Teacher Joanna here today, and can you guess what the color of the day is? I'll give you a clue. It's a color I'm wearing. <gasps> ding, 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 you're right. It's orange, like the color of my hat. We can see lots of orange things all around our world right now. There are scarecrows, there are leaves, and there are pumpkins. Did you guys carve pumpkins? Anybody carve pumpkins for Halloween? Make some faces or maybe you got to paint your pumpkin. This was AJ's painted pumpkin. So now that Halloween is over, there's another holiday that has pumpkins. Do you know what holiday is coming up? Esther, do you know? Or Ellie or Emmy, do you guys know what holiday is coming up? Did you guess Thanksgiving? Yes, it's Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving, when we talk about pumpkins and Thanksgiving, the pumpkins get made into pumpkin pie. Mmm, oh yummy. Do you guys like pumpkin pie? Yeah. I do, yeah. So Thanksgiving isn't just about pumpkin pies. It's about a, t um, a time to be thankful. We show thankfulness and gratitude on Thanksgiving. So what I do with orange pieces of paper AJ and I together, we make a gratitude chain. Every day since November 1st, we wrote down, I don't know if you can see it, but we wrote down a person that we're thankful for. I wrote down that I'm thankful for my mommy because she lets me come over to her house and she cooks me dinner all the time. And I wrote that I am thankful for Mr. Bender because he loves me no matter what. And I also wrote that I'm thankful for my sister, Sassy, cause she's the best sister ever. So maybe you and your mommies and daddies could take some time to make a gratitude chain out of orange paper and write down the people or the things that you are thankful for. So, Another thing in our world that is orange is in, is something behind me. Do you see anything behind me that's orange? There's an orange wreath up there, but there's also, do you guys know what that is? That's right, that's a fire. Yeah, I am sitting in front of my fireplace and I'm gonna read to you a Bible story that has to do with fire. So fire can be helpful. It can keep us warm when it's cold outside. We can make s'mores. Oh, who likes to make s'mores over the fire? I do. That's my favorite thing to do when we go camping. Mm -hmm. So we can make s'mores. We can keep warm. That's very helpful things that fires do. But did you know that fires can be dangerous too? Yes. So, a couple of years ago, my family and I, we had a house fire. This is our house that was in the newspaper. You see the firefighters helping? You see all the smoke here? Our house was on fire and it, it was destroyed, the fire burned it all down and so we had to we had nowhere to live we didn't have a house to live in and we had to trust God that he would take care of us and guess what he did and we got to build a brand new house so remember how I said there's fire in our Bible story today we're going to talk about some people and a fire and how God took care of those people are you ready Okay, so this is called The Three Men in the Fire. Their names are pretty tricky, but I'm gonna tell you, ready? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are our three guys. So, here's the, 
the fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar, who didn't know God, built a huge golden statue. Whoa, guys, look at that huge statue. This is what he told his people. When you hear the musical instruments play, you must bow down and worship my statue. If you don't, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. Oh my goodness. When the people heard the music, they bowed down to the great big statue. See them all bowing down? All except three men who loved the one true God. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See how they're the only ones not bowing down? A few of the king ad king's advisors ran to the king and told him how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had refused to do as the king said. Uh-oh, you think the king was happy or was he angry that they were not listening? Uh-oh, how does he look? He doesn't look very happy to me. King Nebuchadnezzar grew angry. He called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and gave them another chance to obey to bow down to the statue or be thrown into the fiery furnace. The king said, what God would be able to rescue you? What do you think they did? Do you think they bowed down and worshiped the statue? But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, our God is able to save us if he wants to. But even if he doesn't save us, we will not bow down to your statue. Now Nebuchadnezzar was really angry. Get the fire ready, he yelled. Make it seven times hotter. Look at how angry he is. Oh, he's shaking. The workers readied the fire and threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into it. <gasps> what do you think happened, guys? <gasps> then King Nebuchadnezzar looked into the flames, and do you know what he saw? Didn't we throw three men into the fire? Look, I see four in the fire. And the fourth one doesn't look like an ordinary man. Do you see that? Who's in there? Who's in there with them? Whoa. <clears throat> King Nebuchadnezzar called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out of the fire. Not a hair on their head was burned. Their clothing was not touched by the flames. They didn't even smell like smoke. Because of what happened, King Nebuchadnezzar praised God. He had learned about the one true God. He said, there is no other God who can rescue like this. Wow, isn't that incredible? How God saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They didn't want to bow down to the statue because you know what else? God told us in the Bible, in the Ten Commandments, he said, you may not worship anyone but me, meaning God. We're not to worship anything else but God. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were following God's word, and guess what? God rescued them. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, God. So. Let's thank God that he will take care of us when we trust him. So let's fold our hands, close your eyes, and bow your heads. Thank you, God, that you took care of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
they trusted you to take care of them and we can trust you to take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, now it's time to add the color orange to our color poem. So far, we have done the colors. Do you guys remember what our first color was? We did red like the apples, blue like the sky and the seas, brown like our eyes, and now our next color is orange. And do you guys know what this is? That's right, it's a pumpkin. Okay, let's say our poem. Are you ready? AJ, stop. Does God have a favorite color? I would like to know. I think God's favorite would be red, like the apples in my tree. But my friend thinks that it's blue, like the sky and the sea. Do you think God's favorite color could be brown like my eyes? Or maybe it is orange like the pumpkins for the pies. All right, let's do that one more time. We really love this poem. This is so much fun to help us learn our colors. So here we go, you ready? Does God have a favorite color? I would like to know. I think God's favorite would be red, like the apples in my tree. But my friend thinks that it's blue, like the sky and the sea. Do you think God's favorite color could be brown, like my eyes? Or maybe it is orange, like the pumpkins, for the pies. Oh, I cannot wait to eat pumpkin pie. What is your favorite Thanksgiving food to eat? There's turkey and cranberries and mashed potatoes and stuffing. And oh, I also really like green bean casserole. Mmm, delicious. Well, I will see you guys again. Um, before Thanksgiving so we can talk more about that and our favorite foods we can't wait to eat okay I hope you all have a wonderful day and that you are great listeners and helpers for mommy and daddy okay see you later bye <laughs>